Can you imagine paying $3 for a 15 minute phone call? Especially if it was the only way for you to communicate with your loved ones? Oh, and you're only paid 25 cents an hour? That's the sad reality for people who are incarcerated across the United States. But it means big business for the companies that profit from incarceration. When we talk about for-profit prisons, we usually mean the private facilities that incarcerate around 8% of the state and federal prison population. And that can rake in $374 million in profits in a single year. But in reality, all prisons and jails have hidden costs that enrich large corporations at the expense of incarcerated people and their loved ones by charging outrageous prices for fundamental needs, like phone calls. Prison telecom companies like Securus and GTL control nearly 83% of the entire industry, which rakes in $1.4 billion a year through phone call pricing alone. Now things have improved over the years. In 2008, an average out-of-state prison phone call costed $9.73 for 15 minutes, or 64 cents per minute. Today, that has come down to approximately $2.50 for 15 minutes, or 16 cents a minute. Sure, it's an improvement, but consider that the average incarcerated person earns a maximum hourly wage of just 52 cents. That means someone could work an eight hour day and still not afford a half hour long phone call. When was the last time you thought about how much a single call costs? Even international calls aren't as outrageous as what some prisons charge. You could call someone in the UK for the same price some prisons charge to call a neighboring state. On top of that, these costs are passed on to the incarcerated person's loved ones. Through exorbitant fees, they are charged simply to open accounts and deposit money in them. For example, companies like GTL charge a 99 cent deposit fee for online transactions, as well as a whopping $5 to do it over the phone. Each deposit is capped at $50. And since black people make up one third of the US prison population, this burden disproportionately falls on black families, particularly black women, further worsening the racial wealth gap. So what can be done about the cost of prison and jail calls? States like California and Connecticut made them free, while others prohibited the kickbacks and instituted sensible rate caps. The biggest development, however, is happening at the federal level. In 2023, President Joe Biden signed the Martha Wright Reed Just and Reasonable Communications Act which finally allowed the FCC to regulate in-state calls from correctional facilities and empowered the agency to regulate the cost of video calls, which has skyrocketed in price as phone fees fell. The act is a promising start, but there's no guarantee that the FCC will lower the cost as much as they should. It also doesn't prevent telecoms from skirting the rules and charging more for alternative forms of communication, like electronic messaging. The real question is, why aren't these phone calls free? After all, communication with loved ones is a key step towards reducing recidivism. If we're really serious about making prisons and jails a more humane place for rehabilitation and not just punishment centers for corporate profits, then it's time to eliminate these unconscionable costs once and for all.